Have you ever sat in the silence of night and wondered where it all began? The stars, the planets, the boundless space, even time itself. What is the origin of it all? For centuries, thinkers have been captivated by this question, struggling to grasp what came before the universe. And more disturbingly, if the universe emerged from nothing, where did nothing come from? We find ourselves at the crossroads of science and philosophy, peering into the abyss of mystery. The idea of nothing has gripped the human mind for as long as we've tried to understand existence itself. But before we dive into the enigma of nothingness, let's begin by asking, what is nothing? The concept of nothing is paradoxical. After all, how can we even describe the absence of everything? In our everyday experience, we think of nothing as a void, an emptiness, a state where matter, energy, and even thought are absent. But can such a state truly exist? Or is nothing just a placeholder for our ignorance of what lies beyond our understanding? Nobel laureate physicist Lawrence Krauss once said, Nothing is unstable. In his book, A Universe from Nothing, Krauss argued that in quantum mechanics, even a vacuum is never truly empty. There is always a fluctuation of energy, the potential for something to emerge. It seems that even in nothing, there is still the seed of something. But can that really be considered nothing? Is nothing a state that defies definition or a state that cannot exist at all? This question leads us deeper into the mystery. When cosmologists describe the origins of the universe, they often refer to the Big Bang, a moment when time and space as we know it began. But what triggered that singularity? The Big Bang theory tells us that everything, matter, energy, even time itself, exploded outward from an infinitesimal point. But what caused that point to exist in the first place? Did the universe truly spring from nothing? Here we meet the philosophical conundrum of causality. Every effect must have a cause, right? And yet, if the universe was caused by something, we are still left with the next question. What caused that cause? And if we continue down that line of thinking, we're caught in an infinite regression, a never-ending chain of causes and effects. At some point, we're forced to accept that either there was an uncaused cause or the universe emerged from absolute nothingness. But how can we even begin to imagine a universe where causality doesn't apply or where nothingness itself birthed reality? Perhaps nothing is not as simple as we believe it to be. Philosopher Martin Heidegger pondered the question, why is there something rather than nothing? This seemingly simple inquiry pulls us into a profound metaphysical discussion about the nature of reality itself. What if nothing is not truly the absence of everything, but a condition pregnant with potential? Quantum physicists tell us that in the vacuum of space, particles randomly appear and disappear. This fluctuation suggests that even what we perceive as nothing holds within it the possibility of something. So is the nothing from which the universe arose simply a different kind of existence? The deeper we explore this idea, the more questions arise. Can there ever be a true state of nothing, or is our universe with its laws of physics just the inevitable outcome of a deeper, more fundamental state of existence? Let's take a step back and consider this question from a different angle. What role does our own consciousness play in our understanding of nothingness? After all, our perception of reality is limited by the boundaries of human thought. Can we even conceive of a true state of nothingness without using our own minds to impose meaning on it? The philosopher Immanuel Kant argued that our experience of the world is shaped by the structures of our mind. Perhaps the concept of nothing is not a real state of existence, but rather a construct of human cognition, an attempt to give form to the formless. If this is the case, then the question of where nothing comes from may be beyond our capacity to answer simply because our minds are not equipped to grasp the concept in its entirety. As physicist John Wheeler famously said, we are not just observers of the universe, we are participants. The act of observing and asking these questions may itself influence the answers we receive. Could it be that the universe or the idea of nothingness changes based on our interaction with it? Here, we stand at the precipice of two seemingly opposed worldviews, science and spirituality. While science seeks to explain the mechanics of the universe, spirituality asks why it exists at all. Could the answers lie in the confluence of these two perspectives? Many spiritual traditions speak of creation from nothing, but their interpretation of nothing differs from the scientific one. In Hinduism, for example, 
The universe is said to arise from Brahman, the ultimate reality that transcends both existence and non-existence. Similarly, in Christianity, God is described as creating the world ex nihilo, out of nothing. The mystical traditions of the world often refer to a state of nothingness or void that is not empty but full of potential, a state of pure being beyond our comprehension. Could it be that what we call nothing is actually a different kind of existence, one that transcends our understanding? Perhaps in the end, the question of where nothing comes from is unknowable. But is that such a bad thing? As humans, we are driven to seek answers, to unravel the mysteries of the universe. But sometimes the most profound insights come not from answers, but from the questions themselves. What if the question of where the universe comes from is more important than the answer? What if the act of pondering these mysteries is what defines our humanity, our connection to the cosmos? Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson once said, The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. This is a humbling thought. Perhaps we will never fully understand the origins of the universe, but that should not deter us from asking the questions. The journey toward understanding, the curiosity that drives us, is what gives life meaning. So where does that leave us? If the universe came from nothing, where did nothing come from? In truth, we may never know. But in asking these questions, we engage in a process of discovery that is as meaningful as the answer itself. The universe, in all its vastness, invites us to wonder. And maybe, just maybe, the purpose of our existence is not to find definitive answers, but to live in the mystery, to embrace the unknown with curiosity and awe. After all, as the poet Rainer Maria Rilke advised, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. In that spirit, perhaps the greatest gift we can give ourselves is the permission to explore these profound questions, to wonder at the beauty of the unknown, and to find inspiration, not just in the answers, but in the search. Is it possible for something to truly come from nothing? Could nothing be more complex than we imagine? Does our consciousness shape our understanding of reality, and by extension, of nothingness? And can the universe exist without a cause, or is an uncaused cause necessary for its existence? How do science and spirituality intersect in their views of creation and nothingness? In the end, we are left with a mystery. But isn't that what makes life so endlessly fascinating? The universe, with all its complexities and paradoxes, invites us to explore, to question, and most importantly, to wonder.